Hello Gut Squad and welcome back to my channel. This is Cecily, as always. Today is going to be a video all about the shape and color of your stoma and what that can tell you about its status and how it's functioning. This is an important video for you guys because I personally believe that every single ostomate out there should keep very close tabs on how their ostomy is functioning. For this video today, I really will only be discussing intestinal ostomies, that is to say colostomies and ileostomies, because I only have an intestinal ostomy, I do not have a urostomy, so I don't really have expertise in that area. If you're looking for that, I encourage you to go find another video about urostomies. But today's gonna be about intestinal ostomies. I wanted to thank you guys for your patience with me over the past two weeks. I've been absent from my YouTube channel. I've been working really hard to get the school year started and to make sure that all of my online classes are functioning well and getting used to the new system of education since the coronavirus epidemic. I appreciate your patience with me and I hope that you enjoy this video. If you want to follow me off of YouTube where I post more frequently on Instagram, you can follow me at the underscore gut underscore squad. I would love to see you guys over there. Let's first talk about what a normal healthy stoma should look like. A normal healthy stoma is going to be pink or reddish in color and will typically protrude only about an inch or so from your abdomen. This can vary by person and is by no means a hard and fast rule that it has to be an inch out to be healthy. That's just a general guideline that most people use when they talk about how big or long a stoma should be. Intestine, like pretty much every other part of your alimentary or GI tract, is made up of mucosal tissue. Mucosal tissue is called that because it secretes a bunch of mucus. And if you notice that your stoma is really mucusy all the time and very moist, we all love that word, that's normal and you should look for that. And that's that's actually the characteristic of a healthy stoma. So don't be alarmed if you're new to having a stoma and it's very moist and, and mucusy all the time. That's a normal stoma demeanor. Stomas change throughout the day as a rule. So the shape, the size, how much it's contracting kind of changes throughout the day. And that's because intestine undergoes something called peristalsis when it moves food through it. So peristalsis is the normal undulating motion of intestinal tissue as food moves through your GI tract. Peristalsis will make your stoma kind of shift and move all the time, and that's okay. That level of change in the stoma's shape and look is totally normal, and you'll probably notice when you're doing bag changes, if you're about to output or you've just output, that the stoma will kind of like pucker up and then release the stool and then kind of relax again. That's all very normal and should not be alarming to you guys. If you are post-op, you may notice that your stoma is very, very swollen, and that's normal. My my stoma took about three months to kind of calm down to a stable size where it didn't change a bunch. But while I was in that sort of unstable time period, waiting for my stoma to stop being quite so swollen, I had to use something called a stoma guide. A stoma guide is something that's usually included with every single order of bags that you place. Mine come with my coloplast bags. And what you'll basically see is that these stoma guides have little tiny holes in them. These holes will let you know how big your stoma is and thus will inform how you cut your wafer. This is a really helpful tool that you guys should probably keep around, especially if you're in those first few weeks or months post-op because your stoma is bound to change shape and size as it heals. Okay, next we are going to be talking about stomal stenosis. Stomal stenosis is fairly common, but it can have a lot of different causes. So I'm not really gonna get into the causes of stomal stenosis because they're pretty advanced and I don't really want to like scare you guys <laughs> with the worst possible case scenario. But stomal stenosis is something you should regulate and keep tabs on, probably take pictures of to show to your ostomy nurse, surgeon, GI, because stomal stenosis has a very specific look to it. It's basically a narrowing of the stoma where it like becomes super narrow and it also tends to become like longer and kind of like pencil shaped. It's a strange phenomenon. It's happened to me quite a few times and it's always happened for different reasons in my case. One of them was a bowel blockage. So it's important that if your stomal stenosis is accompanied by any kind of increased abdominal cramping, pain, vomiting, nausea, decreased output, explosive output. I know we've all had that, but like I'm talking serious explosive output from a stenostoma. These are all indications that you might have a bigger problem at play and that you probably are gonna wanna tell your nurse, surgeon, doctor, whoever. Stomal stenosis 
is something that happens typically in Crohn's patients. That's where I've read that it's most common, but it's by no means limited to Crohn's patients. So if you don't have Crohn's and you notice stenosing in your stoma, that's not terribly unusual. Just make sure you let your GI know about it as soon as possible because again, this is something that they're gonna wanna keep tabs on if it's a reoccurring problem. If you gain some weight after your ostomy surgery, usually between like 10 and 20 pounds on your abdomen, it's very normal for your stoma to become more flush with the surface of the skin. That just means that if your stoma was like this before, it may become a little bit more even with the surface of the skin and thus not protrude as much. That's okay. Again, that's something to talk about with your ostomy nurse. Make sure that it's normal. Make sure that that's not a more serious problem. Weight gain is perfectly fine. Just keep it under control, obviously, just like with any other medical condition, it's important to keep a healthy weight. If you find that after you've gained weight, your stoma is very flush with the skin and very even, you may want to switch to a type of bag called a convex bag. That's the kind of bag that I use. Convex bags are nice because they have this little protrusion within the wafer that actually allows for a bit more structure around the stoma to ensure that the stoma doesn't like go too much under the surface of the skin and release a bunch of output that will break your seal. Convex bags will help your seal stay much more stable if you do have this flushness issue, if you do have like this even with the skin issue that is so common in people who rapidly gain weight after a stoma surgery. Another great use case for a convex bag is stomal retractions, which is the next thing I want to talk about. Stoma retractions are when the stoma goes beneath the surface of the skin. This can be like pretty substantial at times, or it can just mean that it goes like slightly beneath the skin. There's kind of a spectrum. I use convex bags because they ensure that I don't lose my wafer seal if I retract an output stool. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you notice that your stoma keeps like going underneath the surface of the skin and it's getting to the point where it's blowing off your bags constantly, you may wanna switch over to a convex bag. This is not a foolproof solution. I've definitely had blowouts on days that I've used convex bags. It's not perfect, but it's the best thing I've found so far to help treat my retractions. If you guys have any recommendations for what to do about retractions, I'd personally love to hear them. <laughs> so leave them down in the comments. The other thing I want to mention about retractions that my surgeon actually told me and my GI also said this is that you really want to pay attention to how your stoma's color looks during a retraction episode. If the stoma is super purple or dusky again, like blackish looking, you need to tell someone ASAP because that means that you may have restricted blood flow to that area and you may have risk for something called necrosis, which is tissue death at your stoma site. The next thing to talk about is mucocutaneous separation. Quite a mouthful, but basically this is just when the stoma itself becomes like separated from the skin surrounding the stoma, the peristomal skin. This is a huge problem for people who have inadequate healing or maybe their suturing wasn't done very well around the ostomy during their surgery. In order to address this problem, the first thing that I can tell you, just as someone on the internet talking to you through a screen, is do not use a convex bag in this situation. I love convex bags, but do not use them if you have any kind of mucocutaneous separation. This is disastrous. It can lead to greater damage to the separation. It can actually make the separation bigger if you use a convex bag, so do not use them. You need to go to your ostomy nurse or surgeon as soon as possible because they treat this problem like a wound itself and it needs special treatment and special dressing just like a wound would. So if you have this problem, go consult a medical professional, even tell your caregiver if, if they speak for you because that separation, that separated area can become infected very easily if you do not treat it quickly and appropriately. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, thank you so much for your patience with my absence. School's going super well so hopefully things will keep on that trajectory for the semester and um, if you guys enjoyed the video please like subscribe comment all of that follow me on instagram and as always i hope you guys are staying happy healthy safe and hydrated i'll see y'all later gut squad bye hi girls hi valkyrie hey, hey freya